Today we're gonna go see another beautiful reef tank. Uh, the reef tank is owned by Christina and Scott. And Scott is one of the guys who did a tattoo on my leg. He's a great tattoo artist. We know him for a long time. We know Christina as well. So they invite us to come check out their uh, water box tank. Matt, our maintenance guy, you guys seen him in the videos before. He's the one maintaining the tank. He told me it's looking spectacular. So we're gonna go check it out today. Anyhow, if you guys see behind me, there's been a lot of hype about this. I've been hiding it for every, for about six months. So behind me, there's 4,000 gallons worth of reef. It's 22 feet long. It consists of two identical tanks. They're 11 feet long and they're 2,000 gallons each. They're gonna consist of one sump and there's more to come. So I just wanna keep teasing you guys. Episode one is coming. We're gonna be talking about lighting. We're gonna be talking about flow, aquascape, uh, calcium reactor, protein skimmer, sump, return pumps. We're gonna talk about what dilemmas, what kind of corals, what are we gonna be doing with it? So don't forget, throughout this video, we're gonna hide an egg of Casper somewhere. The winner will get a swag pack with a t-shirt and a sticker. We don't care where you are. If the winner happens to be within the 48 states and United States, we're gonna send you a box of corals, our choice. We're gonna take care of you, a few frags, a t-shirt, a swag pack. So the hunt is on. Go hunt for Casper, go find them. I don't know where it's at, guys. I can't tell you, so you have to watch the video. Anyhow, let's go check out this beautiful reef tank. All right, guys, we just made it to Christina's house. What's up, guys? So Christina's been a customer of ours for many years now, and she's been in the hobby how long? Tell us. Oh my goodness, over 30 years. That since long? I was a child, yep. Oh my gosh, yeah. I have no clue. I thought I've been doing it long for 20 something yeah. years. <laughs> We're getting old now, yeah, we <laughs> right? Yeah, we're getting very old. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, how long has this tank been running? This tank has been up for about three and a half years now. Three and a half so, years? yeah. It looks gorgeous. Thank I haven't seen so it in over much. a year. Well, thanks to Worldwide Corals, it looks amazing. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, Matt, our, one of our technicians has been maintaining this tank basically since day one. Yes, he has been. He takes care of all three of them or just this one? All three of them. All three of them. So yes. she's got three fish tanks. We're going to get into that in a minute. So a couple questions about the tank. The tank is a water box tank. It is a water box. How big is it? It is a 190 water box. 190? Yep. And tell me a little bit about the tank. So you say three and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's a mixed reef. Do you start everything with fresh rock and fresh frags? Yep. Fresh rock and fresh frags. So everything that you see in here is growth. Um, the tank has done really, really well. Um, I, I think I think it looks phenomenal. I love the, how everything is encrusted. I mean, look at the size of the acropora. There's, a, there's coral warfare definitely going on here. I can see the Montipoa right there fighting with the Leptoceris back there. Yep. We can see the Favia with the Mycetium right there. There's definitely, they're going at it right there. Yep. If I was you, I'd be very careful with the beautiful rainbow chalice right yes. there. Don't let that Mycetium. Mm -hmm. I will cut maybe the end of the Mycetium. Yes. To give more space, because that's just gorgeous, you know? Yeah. But uh, again, you can see there's the German Blue Digi with the Bubblegum Digi right there. They're going at it super strong. Mm -hmm. You got this plate in Montipoa right here. I think it's the Kumpao. Yep. I mean, it's just incredible how much coral warfare. Obviously, something you're doing in here is doing right. It's doing great. Yeah, we have the fox flame back here. I love the, it. It's encrusting all over the overflow. It I is. Can. It is. And it's encrusting into the rock on the uh, other mycidium. The I chalice see. right there. Mm -hmm. So technically, since we're talking about coral warfare, the, the fox flame is killing your mycidium. Yes. So yes. we need to trim that. What I are you going <laughs> to let it die? Like, look, we can tell Matt next time to trim it and put in a different part of the tank, I'm thinking. Maybe okay. right here to play it. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about the flow. Are these MP60s or MP40s? Uh, I have four MP40s. They look so big because of this basket that you have. Who made those baskets? Um, it's an aftermarket part that I got to go over top of the power head. It basically okay. just protects uh, certain fish and things from getting inside there. And, okay. Uh, you know, we've had issues in the past of fish getting sucked up in there. They're pretty powerful. Do you see a difference since you incorporated Absolutely. those? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And I we like do it. pull them out. We clean them with citric acid occasionally. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. They look great. Four MP40s for a tank this size is plenty of flows for those of you guys that don't know. Each yes. of those things does close to 4,000 gallons, if I'm correct, an hour, and that is plenty. Yes. Yeah. And for lighting, you have a lot of light here. You I have do. Gen 4. Gen 4. You got yep. four of them. They're my favorites. Yeah. I mean, they're they're such they're a light. They're wonderful. They're, still, they're wonderful. They work so great. Yes, they do. And why you decide to go with four? Because you knew you wanted to grow SPS? I wanted to grow SPS and I also wanted even spread. I didn't want to have dark areas in the tank. So I wanted to ensure that, you know, it was full light all the way across. You happy with the way they've been performing? 100%, they've been fantastic. I mean, 
no problems with any of the equipment the three and a half years that we've had it. It's yeah, great. They, the Ecotec Marine produce a very high quality. I call them the apple of, uh, of the industry. Yes. You know, they produce nothing but high-end equipment. Yes. So how about, let's talk about, about your fish a little bit. Mm -hmm. I cannot help it, but to see these sparrow clowns, how old are they and how healthy <laughs> are they? And he has got the biggest belly ever. Yeah, so. They're just amazing. They're in love with each other. <laughs> they don't love anyone else. <laughs> um, they're really mean, of course, like most clownfish are. Funny she said that earlier. She was just doing some arrangement just to get the tank ready for the video. And these clownfish just start biting her fingers. I'm like, man, this is crazy. They bite and they can draw a little blood. They have teeth like a little piranha. So they surprise um, you too. Like, and they, they just normally when they bite, they just like do this, like yes. they're trying to do this jerking. They're they shake their head and try to rip off some tissue. <laughs> People have no clue, but clownfish and damsels are one of the most aggressive fish. If you ever go down diving, if you get close to one of their kids, they come out and they hit you. They, yes. they wanna, like, get out of here. They do. Mm -hmm. You ever been tempted to try to erase them? I have. You know what yes. you have to do is put a little flower pot in there and then remove them into a different system. Yes, It's yes. tempting when you see them. It's tempting. And sometimes they get to a level, you can see the little clump just you, can. you can see the white and the orange you in there. You can, and uh, we've had them like grow like some of the eggs are fairly large. So yeah. it's nice to see, but... It's to, a lot of work. It's a lot of work and you have to feed them live. Yeah, rotifers so, and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lot, so... So I see you have four silphan tanks in there. Yes. Can you tell me what's the reason for it? Because they're kind of <laughs> chasing each other a little bit. So, well, funny story with that. Um, so four Giardini cell fins. And originally I had them in my 110 gallon water box at my tattoo gallery. And I also had a Miniatus grouper in there who was extremely mean and beat all of them up. And I had no choice but to bring them home and put them in here. So originally, to be honest, that's not what I wanted. Um, so were they getting along on the beginning a little bit? Yeah, they've, they've always been getting along. Right now, they kind of chase each other down yeah. a little bit. But um, for the most part, you know, they get along really well. So um, a good tip that I was giving you earlier, I saw them. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised how well they're getting along with each other. Yeah, they chase each other around. If you want to slow that down, make sure you always have algae available and put two clips, one on each end. Okay and they will not fight so much for one area. Perfect. It helps a lot. Perfect. So I love you, it. you got a copper brown butterfly, so it helps with the aptaceous. Yep. Have you noticed him picking at anything else? No? Nope, he doesn't pick at any other coral. Otherwise, he would have been gone. <laughs> um, he's been a really, really great fish because I did go through a stage where I had some aptasia issues. Um, and he cleaned it up right away. Um, I have the chorus ras in here because I had some flatworm issues in the past. And took care of it? They took care of it. How about for critters? I don't see a lot of shrimp and stuff like that. Do you have any cleaner shrimp, blood shrimps? I don't have any cleaner or blood shrimps in this aquarium currently. I did have them in here, but the Neopercularis hogfish. You gotcha. Know, they like to eat those. I do have a couple harlequin shrimp in here because I did Keep have the Yep. That's good. So there's a couple of those guys running around. I do have a lot of Nasara, sand sifting stars, some conches. Keep the So sand workers, a lot of workers. A lot of workers. I was going to say that your sand bit looks so clean. Thank so you. So clean. I love it. It's not easy to keep it that clean. No, that's a pet peeve of mine. I, I love a clean sand bed in an aquarium. When you start getting that little bit of diatoms and things yeah. down there. You know, I, I don't care for that. So I like to keep it as clean as possible. So I can't help it by just to look at some of your beautiful corals you got here. Yes, I mean, you got you. the crazy golden eye chalice back there. Th that blastomusa you got there. I mean, yes. how many how many heads did you start it with? Two. Two? And I got that from J-Dub. Yeah, and it's gorgeous. It is dropping babies. You can actually yeah, I see, see, it. see. There's one dangling right there. There, and you can see them no. on the rock. That is a baby that just dropped. Yes. You guys have to see this. Yes. There's, uh, there's one dangle in there, but literally right below, like I want to see maybe seven, eight inches below, there's two heads actually attached in the rock. I'm so excited because it's so cool to see something like that that naturally frag itself. It didn't spawn. It just naturally just got so big. Mushrooms usually do that. Blastos can do that. I've seen a couple of the corals do that, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just incredible to see. Leathers literally will drop a, a complete bud out of them and just create a, bowl, wow. a little baby just on the side. It's so amazing, isn't it? See, th th whatever you're doing in here, they're very happy. So if you were to try to play with that a little bit, it's, it's a give and take. So 
yeah, you can give a couple of the corals on top a little more color, but mm -hmm. your Yuma won't look that big. And no. look at that thing. He's that, look at the babies around yes. there. Yes. So that's one thing I would love for you to just keep on continue reproducing. The jawbreaker mushroom, yes. rainbow chalice, the crazy blastos you got here, the cool monties. So the tank looks beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about our maintenance. So mm -hmm. how often you guys do water change on this tank? So Matt comes once a week, every Thursday to service okay. all the aquariums. Majority of the time we do a water change between 30 and 50 gallons. Okay. There are weeks we'll skip a water change if the water parameters look perfect, you know, okay. phosphates, nitrates. Um, everything's on point. Everything's on point, you know, and I also do have the apex system okay. hooked up. So that does, you know, dosing the calcium, magnesium, Alkalinity. alkalinity. Okay. Um, Anything else you control with the uh, Neptune dose controller? Um, I do, well, I have all the regular probes that do like the pH and salinity okay. and temperature. And, um, you know, of course I have, you know, Your the power. So, so you yeah. got a full system. Yes, basically. a full system in there. Okay. Yeah. And what are you dosing? What, what brand chemicals? Um, Brightwell. All Brightwell? Brightwell Aquatics, yep. Okay, and are you using Brightwell salt as well? Um, I'm using whatever salt you guys use at Worldwide. Okay, yeah, that's so, what we're using. Yep, Brightwell. Okay. Yep. Okay, what brand protein scheme are you using? Can I see it? An Octo. Okay, Octopus. Mm -hmm. Okay, Regal 200. It's a great skimmer. Mm -hmm. I think what I have on my tank is a Regal 150, I think. Okay. Same one, it's just the next size. I've got an 80 gallon on my office. Okay, nice. So tell me a little more. What else do you have going on here? So uh, you got a carbon reactor. Carbon reactor, GFO reactor. Okay, to control the phosphates. Yep. And then yep. you got a four dosing channel. Four from dosing a DDR system. So that's yep. for the calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and what else? Um, aminos. Aminos? Yep. And are you feeling, are you feeding reefroids to the corals directly? I do broadcast feeding and okay. I'll do a target feeding. And how often are you doing the target feeding? I do target feeding maybe twice a month. Um, it's very strategic. I got you. Um, and then I do broadcast feeding once to twice a week, just depending. Okay. I'll yeah. use a light broadcast feeding like maybe three days after Matt services. Okay. And then the night before he comes on the Thursday, I do a heavier broadcast feeding. Okay, also I see you have a aqua UV sterilizer. Yep. You have a tons the auto top off. Yep. I love how I can operate the Apex through my phone. I can be anywhere in the world on my travels yeah. and sign You're on. You're traveling too. Yes, I travel a lot. So it's nice because I can check the water parameters you know, I do have a camera sitting here. I can also view the tank. Nice. So it's uh, it's really great. This tank is very self-sustaining. It has a great yeah. ecosystem. Oh, it shows. Yeah. So one thing is worth mentioning. I don't know if everyone ever told you this, but it shows how passionate you are about your reef tank. A lot of people hire us to do maintenance on their tank. They, they, they buy the tank from us. They, they hire us to set it up. They hire us for maintenance. They buy the course from us. And they immediately assume that by doing that, it's a, it's a guarantee that everything's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. There is no such a thing. If you hire us to be here once a week, we're here for an hour or two, that's only 1% or 2% of the week's time of the hours. Mm -hmm. So it shows that you're into your tank. You, you don't assume that oh, they're, they're taking care of it. I should be hands off. When you hire someone to maintain the tank and you're still into it, that's when I see the most successful reef tank. Seriously, that's when I see the best ones. And it shows how passionate you are. You know everything about your chemicals, your equipment, you know your fish, you know your corals. You're, yes. not, just, you're, you're not just saying it just to say it. You genuinely show that you know what you're doing, you know? So well, congratulations, thank you. your tank looks beautiful. Thank you. All right, so tell me about this tank. First, before you even tell me anything, I'm impressed with this tank. Thank you very much. This, this is, I just seen it. Every single core on here is beyond happy. Yes. Look at the size of these zoanthids. Yes. Look at the mushroom. Yeah. I mean, I can go every single coral. Look at this Cyphestria. Look at the chalice with the two colors. Look yep. at the Favia. Yeah. What is that? The My Miami? That's yeah, a My Miami. JC I mean, Fox. look yep. at the Avatar Mycetium. Yep. Look at the chalice up there. Look at the two monkeys having a coral warfare. Yes. So you're a true coral addict. I am a coral addict. So. Is it true passion and a hobby? Yeah. So will you say in this tank you're doing similar things that you're doing over there? Absolutely. So I don't have an apex on here, but I do okay. have the dosing system that just does alkalinity. 
but this tank gets a water change just as often as the 190. Okay, um, and, and the light, what is it? That is a Gen 5 Gen light. 5, okay. Gen 5. And yep. for flow, what do you have? And for flow, I just have a small, um, kind of like a little j like power little head, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Just one? Just one. Okay. Yeah. It's plenty. It's plenty. It doesn't have too much flow, not too little flow, and all the corals are seem very happy you with You know it, what's so. crazy to me? This tank looks amazing, mm -hmm. but this one looks a hair better. Mm. It's like when every time you think that corals look good, you, there's something, I'm telling you, you, you see this tank right here? Look at that thing. Yes, and this is the, the frog spawn that the clownfish were housing that nearly almost died. I only put it in here three weeks ago and it looks like that. Can we see the sun real quick? Yeah, of course. So you got another reef octopus? Yep, reef, op reef octopus. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I just have, um, you know, the part B alkalinity in here with a small doser. What kind of doser do you have there? Um, that Versa? is the Versa, yep. I love it. I just put one on my tank. I'm dosing, I'm dosing cog water and I love it, I love uh -huh. it, I love it. So I can't help it but to see the little angel fish. What kind is it? I can't so see So he it. is a Miss Bar Regal Angel. Okay, come on, buddy, come out. I know, he'll come out. And you got a Hell Freak Firefish is the yep. nicest one. Yes, Hell Freaky. I had two. One of them kind of wasn't looking so swift. I put him in the seahorse pipe yeah. fish tank back here. Um, you know, and I do have a nice big fat mandarin goby in here as well. How small was the angelfish when you got him in here? Oh my goodness. Like He was that this, tiny. This tiny. Where did you get him that small? I got him from marine collectors. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So and he's, then this guy, how long has he been here? He's been in there since I started the aquarium, so about a year and a half. He's got the place all to himself, basically, huh? Yes, he so does. So you got three fish, the mandarin, hell freakish, and the angel. Yep, I had a blotchy Anthias borbonius, and he passed away, unfortunately. And I had a Midas Blenny in here, um, and he, we saw him like two weeks ago, but we don't see him anymore, so I'm a little oh, sad. I'm that sorry. was one of my son's favorite fish, so... I see you got sad. a cleaning shrimp, a red serpent star. Yep. I'm yep. so, so, so impressed how these tanks Thank are looking. You. They're looking so good. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I have a couple sand sifting stars, a couple Nasaris and conch, you know, because again, I like the clean sand bed, you know. So. Looks amazing. Thank you so much. All right, so let's see the final one. All right. All right, so the last tank. Tell me about this one. Another water box. Another water box. How big? This is a 20 gallon water box right. and I did have the stand custom made um, from the guy that you guys use. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And I have a Gen 5. So you Gen, Gen 5 on both of these? On both Gen of 4th. these, okay. yep. Um, this one I obviously don't have a skimmer or anything like that. Um, this tank gets the same kind of amount of water changes and treatment like the other two. Um, but this is a little bit newer. We started, this tank has been many things, right? It was the uh, clownfish and I was going to say, what's the purpose of this tank? And then it was kind of a quarantine for when I was getting a lot of fish into the 190. So I had it set up as a quarantine for a long time. Um, and then I... <laughs> I had to bring the Miniatus grouper. I had oh, to get my, him. You brought him in here? I put him in here. She's and he crazy. was in here for. She's crazy, guys. Well, he was beating everyone up. They're at the so tattoo aggressive. Gallery. They're gorgeous, he but was, they're so oh, aggressive. I know. I love him so much. But he, even with this lid on here, he was. He forced his way out and right onto the floor. And we uh, woke up and he was. Yeah, you needed to pull away. He's too strong for yeah. that lid. The purpose now is like no flow. Very calm fish. I see a yep. pipe fish back there. Yep, I have what several else? pipe fish. I have um, a couple of banded pipe fish, blue stripe pipe fish. I have two dragon face pipe fish, and then I have two seahorses. Oh, how long have you had most of them in there? Um, not long, just a matter of weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yep. are you planning on getting any more tanks after this? Well, I need a bigger house. <laughs> So at some point in the next, you know, a couple so years. So when you get your next house, then we get the next house, tank. that's when I'm going to be calling you for the custom. Something bigger. All yeah, right. I'm going to be calling we'll be you for the custom. To. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. The more, the merrier. <laughs> All right. Well, Christina. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you inviting very us over. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Of course, my pleasure. Your thank tank you. looks beautiful. Appreciate it. I hope it. you guys enjoy. Absolutely. Thank you for watching our channel, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Leave some comments below. We'll see you guys on the next episode. See you guys soon.